Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a great video practice exam and a lab for you here on EIGRP. We're going to be doing some load balancing. I'm going to bring a question up here on the whiteboard in about 10 seconds. And if you want to pause the video at that point to think about your answer, fantastic, because we're going to bring the live equipment up just a few seconds after that. So let's go ahead and get to this question on EIGRP unequal cost load balancing. You just configured it. Now in which of the following tables are you going to find the feasible successors that are taking part in the load balancing? A, the EIGRP topology table. B, the EIGRP route table. C, the IP routing table. Or D, you won't find them in any of these tables because feasible successors don't take part in any kind of EIGRP load balancing until they actually become successors. So where are we going to find those feasible successors after we configure unequal cost load balancing? We're going to bring the routers up in just a second. We're actually going to take a look at how we would configure that in the first place. And let's go ahead and do that right now. On router one, I've already brought up the topology table for EIGRP. Definitely a table you want to be very familiar with for the NA and NP exams. And I've also run show IP route EIGRP. Now notice for this particular network, the all twos network, I've got an entry here in my routing table and I have one entry. But in my topology table, I have two entries. Why? Just quickly tell yourself or just say it loud, why? Why do I have two entries for that network in my topology table, but one in my routing table? Well, the reason is, is that the second entry in the topology table, that is a feasible successor. What's already happened is that EIGRP has discovered that we can get to that network from router one via this loop-free path, and it's a valid loop-free path, but the distance, the FD, the feasible distance is a little bit higher, and EIGRP will perform equal cost load balancing by default but it will not perform unequal cost load balancing by default. And here's a great example of equal cost. Here's an entry for 172.12.23.0 slash 24. Notice that the feasible distance is exactly the same for both of these entries. So that's why we see two successors here and why we already have, excuse me, that's for 23.0. That is why we have two entries already for that 23.0 network because that number is exactly the same for both routes. Now it's not exactly the same for this particular network, the all twos network, but we could go ahead and make and configure unequal cost of load balancing and use both paths. Now, how do we do that to begin with? What's the exact command you would use in this situation and where would you configure it? We're using AS100, right? we're going to use the variance command. And it's always going to tell you it's metric variance multiplier 1 through 128. And definitely, I, I would definitely say any exam question, any job interview question, any question is going to say, what's the lowest number you could use with variance to make such and such happen? Uh, what is the lowest variance that we could put on this router that's going to make this entry take part in unequal cost load balancing? and it's two, right? I mean, they're almost the same. So two, what happens again, just a quick reminder of the variance command. I've got some other videos on YouTube on this as well. But what happens is when I put variance two in, the router is gonna look at the distance of the successor, multiply that by two and say, okay, any feasible successor that has a feasible distance lower than this is gonna be put in the routing table. It does not make the route a successor as we're gonna see in just a moment. So it's one of those things that when you explain it or you read it, it looks long-winded, but it's really not. We're just going to put two and that's it. Now, the reason we don't just slap 128 right there, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'll confess, the first time I looked at it, I thought, well, why didn't you figure it out? Just put 128. Well, you could have some paths that are really, really slow and you don't necessarily want to perform load balancing over them. So with variance two, that's going to get the job done. So I'll put that in there. And I will just run show IP route EIGRP again, and we nothing changed. Nothing has changed. What do I need to do now? 
Well, what I'm going to do is clear my routing table of all dynamically learned routes with show IP, excuse me, with clear IP route asterisk. And now that second path is showing up here. You don't have to tear your EIGRP adjacencies down. I, I would not do that in that particular scenario or reload anything. Just clear your routing table. Now we've got both of those entries in this particular, in our routing table for that particular network. Notice that the distances do not change. And also notice, and let's look at the topology table again, because that's a really important table for your exam studies and your understanding of EIGRP. Notice the distances don't change. It still says, the topology table still says one successor. That's because there is one best path. We just made it acceptable for EIGRP to use this feasible successor with variance two. That's all there is to it. So uh, don't be thrown by that because it threw me at first and that could pop up on your exam as well. You know, why aren't we seeing more than one successor here now? You're not making this route a successor. You're just making it acceptable for the EIGRP process to use it. Okay, it sounds like we're picking nips there, but we're really not. It's an important detail. So let's take a look at these answers and see where we did see the feasible successor. We saw it in the topology table. That's no problem. We saw it in the EIGRP route table. We saw it in the IP routing table. So actually you see it in all three of these particular tables. Let me give you one bonus question here before you leave. We got our topology table and we got our route table. What's the other EIGRP table that we didn't look at? And how can I look at it? You see CNAers really need to know this one too. I know you NPers are probably all over that. We need to run show IP EIGRP neighbors because your neighbors and your topology and your route table are your three tables. And show IP EIGRP neighbors, there it is. That's all there is to it. So that takes care of this particular video practice exam and lab. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA and CCNP success story.